I want to start by saying thank you to the delivery driver that brought a little over a thousand rounds of eight millimeter Mauser ammunition up two and a half flights of stairs. Now, I ordered some eight millimeter Mauser from Centerfire Systems. This is Turkish ammo, as well as some German SMK ammo. They had a really, really good deal on it. I got 300 rounds of German SMK and 300 rounds of Turkish ammo for about $260. And then they had packages of 150 rounds of Turkish ammunition for, I think, $50, which is a outstandingly good deal in today's market. So I went in with a friend. It was only $15 to get it shipped, so we each paid $750. So some of this is his, but let's break it open and see how it looks. All right, it looks like it's packaged pretty tight, which I like to see. Oh, I forgot. I also got a couple of CZ-75 magazines. Hopefully both of these will work in my Bull Armory Cherokee. So this looks like it's all Turkish ammo, and most of these look like Turkish stripper clips. However, a few of them, like this one right here, aren't Turkish. They look like they are, they are a different pattern. I've seen this on Ethiopian ammo, but it's also common with like Czech or German ammo. All right, so that's that box. Let's look at this other one. <clears throat> okay, so this is the pack of German and Turkish ammo that came together. All right, that's the German stuff. This is the Turkish stuff. So it looks like the strap kind of came apart. Um, that's to be expected. This is really, really old. Let me move the camera and we'll look at these a bit closer. Quick ADD break from the ammo. This is my Bull Cherokee and this is the magazine that I was sent with it. Uh, it looks like it was made by Tangfolio, judging by the mark that is on it, right there. You can see there's a little T inside of the triangle. And then this is the Metgar magazine that I just got. And it looks almost exactly identical. However, when it's in there, you can see it holds a lot tighter. Versus this is the original one I have, and it really presses out quite a bit. Um, and then when I press it in, it actually doesn't feed. This magazine is much higher quality. I'm not gonna open up every single one of these boxes, but I will open a few and show you some rounds so you can see the condition that they came in. So this is what they look like. We have factory codes, we have 40, which is the year of manufacture, and then just some other markings on this, and I'm not quite sure what all of these mean, to be honest. However, I do know a source where I can look that up. Okay, this box does have a fair amount of rust on these rounds. So, uh, so you can see this one actually appears to be pitting a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll wash that off and clean it off and just see how deep that is. And I'll pull some of these rounds out to see what the inside looks like before I shoot it. Now I have been known to shoot some pretty sketchy ammo on this channel in the past, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. All right, let's look at another box. Okay, the, ooh. Now this box is a pretty big tear on the side right there, and these rounds are looking pretty similar. Let me dump a few of these out. These rounds also appear to have some rust on them. So you can see my finger is just getting kind of getting covered in orange as I'm touching these. Um, a lot of it does appear to be pretty surface, so if I rub on here pretty hard, some of it does come off, some of that orange color. You know how when paper gets wet, it kind of feels stiff? Um, that's what this cardboard feels like. It feels like it has pretty clearly gotten wet. Now, this round is from a box that was a little bit deeper in, inside of the, inside of the sleeve. Let me dump some of these out and see. These ones are looking better. Um, they still have surface rust on them, 
but they aren't quite as bad as some of those other rounds. So just as an example, this is the worst round in the first box that I pulled out that was right on the surface of the case. And you can see there's just a lot of thick rust on it that almost looks like it's pitting a little bit. This one was deeper down inside and it does still have some of that. It was the worst one in that box, but it's not quite as bad. Okay, so that is the German ammo. Let's take a look at the Turkish rounds next. So Centerfire packages them in these little sleeves like this. You should just be able to pull that open. Um, I don't know if they heat sealed it, so we're gonna find out about that in just a second. Yeah, it looks like they are in little bags that are kind of taped together. Let's just open this up. Now, when I bought from Centerfire in the past, um, it was ammunition that was in boxes, and they were sort of like saran wrapped together. It actually, I think, had a relatively minor amount of waterproofing if it was damaged in shipping. This would not this would not have been waterproof because there were plenty of holes in it. So let's get this to the point that it just falls apart. All right, so you can see from a distance how these look. Um, they did come on stripper clips. This is the single piece Turkish style of stripper clip. This one is 1944. Nineteen forty-four. I wonder if this whole clip is nineteen forty-four. Okay, that clip was all nineteen forty-four dated ammunition. I don't know about the rest of this bag though. Let's keep on checking. Uh, all nineteen forty-nine. It looks like. All 1949 as well. Okay, it kind of looks like this one has been hit before. That's not actually the case. It's just kind of the way that the tarnish is on there. If I cleaned that, you'd be able to see, um, but it is actually flat. From a cursory glance, this stuff all looks pretty okay. However, there is some stuff that is tarnished like this. Um, I can't feel any pitting or rust on that. It's just kind of dirty. Let's pull this off of here. Since this is not a standard Turkish stripper clip. Uh, this one is a little bit different. It's still made of brass but it is a multiple piece stripper clip like we'd see coming from some other countries. So I wonder if these are all the same date as well. So these all appear to be 1941 dated as well. Uh, so they are on a different stripper clip. However, it's possible that that's just a, another year of Turkish stripper clip and they did have some variation, but this is not the most common kind of scene. Okay, let me get this cleaned up and then we'll check the other bag. All right, second bag. Okay, so most of these rounds look like this. They aren't that bad. However, a few of them do have some more severe tarnishes on them. Um, this uh, bullet is loose. Let me pull this one off and show you it. So, I don't know if you can hear that, but it shakes back and forth. I wonder if I can wiggle this out. Okay, it's not coming out, but it is loose. It has a little bit of back and forth wobble. Uh, let me check these rounds, see what year they're from. Okay, this clip is from 1938. Some of them also have some more severe tarnishing like this one does. So you can see that clip just has some oxidization. It doesn't rust because it's made of brass. And this clip had four rounds of 1942 dated ammo, and then this one was from 1941. Okay, so I have three more of these bags. Uh, two of them belong to my friend, but he said that he was okay if I picked through them and picked out some rounds that might be interesting to me. So the three that I take, I'm gonna separate all of those out by year. Then the remaining two I'll pick through to see if there are any years that I need, or if I'm missing a few rounds from a certain year, try and find some others from that year. But regardless, I think that this was a good buy. I would have liked to know the condition that the uh, German ammo was in prior to buying it. I didn't know it was gonna be this water damaged, but it's surplus, so I totally don't blame Centerfire for that, and that's probably why it was so cheap. 
I just saw this in the bag, but you can see that there is some pretty clear um, watermarks on the box from where the rounds were positioned, and that is why it is shaped in that way. So the German ammunition has seen better days. The Turkish ammo has too. However, the Turkish ammo appears to be in better shape than the German ammo. A few last things I wanted to note, and I'm sorry I don't have my lapel mic out anymore. Uh, look how dirty my hands are. They are just absolutely filthy from handling all these rounds. These rounds are dirty. Secondly, uh, I did notice a few things as I was going through these. First, I saw this round where it was completely recessed, and I will put it next to the microphone so you can hear it. Uh, if you didn't hear anything, that's because there is no powder in there. And then one of these two was uh, so loose that the bullet came out while I was playing with it. It wasn't this one. This one does still have powder in it, but uh, if I keep on twisting that, the bullet will come out. This one, this one has powder as well, but the bullet can be twisted inside of there. And then this one right here, the bullet came out uh, without me really trying to, and it is empty. So one step I'm going to add as I sort through these rounds is I'm going to try and twist the bullet on each one, and then I'm going to shake each one. I want to make sure there's powder inside before I fire it, and I want to make sure the bullet's not too loose before I try and put it in a gun. If this round did still have powder in it and I tried to fire it like this, uh, I would have some major problems because the pressure inside of here would be really full. So sometimes if it was like this one and the round was super loose, the bullet could get pushed down inside of there as I go to chamber it, and that could cause some danger issues. So as I'm sorting these, I'm going to try and twist the bullet and see if it twists, and I am going to make sure there's powder inside by shaking it. So twist the bullet, shake it and make sure there's powder inside, and then check the head stamp and sort it by date. So I went through about 450 rounds, and these are the rounds that I did not feel safe to shoot. We'll look at some and uh, see the condition that they're in. Most of them did not have the powder issue, the powder is still inside, but the bullet is still loose in there, so I didn't want to shoot those. See the bullet spins freely, but the powder is still there. So that is the vast majority of these rounds. Now a few of them did have cracks on the neck of the case, which you can see right there, you can see just a crack, and so the bullet would spin freely because of that crack. I also wouldn't want to shoot this if there was a crack on the case because the case would likely crack more when upon firing and that would send a whole bunch of hot gas back in my face. So what will I do with these bad rounds? Well, uh, if I am testing an ammunition, I will use the rounds from these ones for when I pull and measure the bullets because there should still be the same amount of powder inside if it just rotates freely and didn't actually come out. Alternatively though, if I have any left, I will probably give them to somebody who reloads because, well, they can still pull the bullets out and use those. And then maybe for some of them, if the case is still in good shape, they could uh, put the bullet back in the case after replacing the powder. I separated all the rounds out by year, and I had at least one round in almost every year, ranging from 1931 to 1949. Uh, there was one or two gaps in there, but that is what I had. However, a large majority of the round fell into a few years. 1944 was a common one, 1943 was a common one, and then I think 1935 was a common one. So with the years that I have enough rounds to test, you will see videos on those in the future, but for these ones, they'll either go in my collection or maybe just get shot. All of that being said, I'm excited to see the content that this ammo can provide for me. Uh, I'm 8mm Mauser Man, and I bought a whole bunch of 8mm Mauser ammo, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Hey, John. Hey, John.